Hello friends. Thank you for joining me for this program designed um, to look at our government, how it operates, and the people involved in its operation. My name is Dan Arman, and I'm the host of I Want to Know, and I would like to issue a warm welcome to um, my guest, Barbara Naclario, who is the health educator for the East Shore Health District, correct? Did I say correct. that correctly? Correct, yep. Okay, thank you for joining me, and I appreciate your time in doing this. Well, thank you for bringing me in. Welcome. Um, so, as people that uh, may have seen the show before, I always ask, tell us about you. Okay. Um, I am a full-time health educator, which is kind of a rare thing in the state. Um, I have a husband and three daughters. I live in Madison. We've been there for 28 years. Um, before I was a health educator, I was a scientist for about 17 years. In a health scientist? A scientist in infectious disease and asthma and allergy. Okay. Um, and did you work for the government then? I worked or? for the VA for a couple of years, and then I worked for Pfizer okay. for about 15 years. Up in New London? Yep. Okay. Yep. And after I took some years off when my kids were little, uh, my kid's pediatrician said, why don't you look into public health? Because I... I'm constantly complaining that people don't take control of their own health. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he said, you'd be really good. They need good brains. So um, I looked into a program at Southern and uh, signed up for a three-year program. And during that time, I started working at the East Shore District Health Department as a volunteer coordinator for rides for the elderly. Okay. Cool. So I'd hook up people who needed rides to their medical appointments with a group of volunteers who all use their own cars to take people to their appointments. And now we have buses to do that, don't we? Many we do. Many There's times? still a really big problem with, with transportation. And funding, period. Yes, yeah. Which is it, usually the source of it's, the it's problem. A, it's a big barrier. Right, right. <laughs> um, we lost our funding for that um, a couple of years after that. But while I was there, I got my, uh, my master's in public health from Southern, and then I... Uh, applied for the health educator job, the first health educator in our district. Mm -hmm. and uh, One of the few in the state. Yeah, and I got it. Um, could you describe what you do? Sure. So a health educator, we have several things we always have to do. We have to assess the community to see where are the health problems and try to determine why are these problems happening. I see. And where we can intervene to teach people that they have choices. Would that, now would that be a part, uh, uh, that analysis be like if you had a spike in asthma rates in a certain region mm -hmm. of North Brantford or Brantford or tick-borne disease, uh, would that be part of that analysis? That would be absolutely part of that analysis. Okay. Every day I spend probably my first half an hour in the office looking at what's going on. I look on social media, I look on the national media, the state media. I look at my reports from the state. Mm -hmm. And the hospitals in the region, too, yep. I would imagine. Yep. And, you know, check with my partners and see what's going on. Okay. A lot of times it's not that that brings it to my attention. It's usually phone calls or people who are in a, a situation. In a crisis mode of some yeah, sort. Yeah, that right. brings, brings those up. But So our first job is to look at what needs to be done. The second job is to communicate. So whether I go out one-to-one -one talking to somebody in our office or speak in front of a group on Lyme disease and ticks and how to avoid that if you're a hiker or a gardener or going to talk about having uh, a healthy diet, but you're under a budget. So go into the grocery store. How do you shop for food for that's healthy? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. on a fixed income. Right, sure. right. Which, again, there are barriers, but people have to find ways to overcome these barriers. And so my, jo my job, as I see it, is to give people choices. Okay. So you... And preventative me measures, too. Right, right. Options. Right. You have the choice to go out drinking late into the night and wake up early and have to go to work. Or you had the choice to get to bed at a reasonable time and get up in the morning Be well and go rested. to work. I, mean, I, I often start my speeches when I go out and give talks with everybody has choices. You have a choice. 
Um, everybody takes risks. I take risks. You know, whether it's driving a little too fast on the highway or having that donut in the morning or whether you decide I'm not working out, it's not worth it. Mm -hmm. Those are the risks you take, but they're the choices you make. And, and you there are potential consequences. Right, yeah. right. And to teach people they have choices to do, uh, you know, to, to be healthier. So that's really my mission. Um, but I use social media. I use our website. I use... Um, are you on Facebook? We are on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. Okay. And soon to be YouTube. <laughs> okay. Yes. We can help facilitate that. <laughs> what um, what town, now you are a part of, you serve both Brantford and North Brantford. We serve Brantford, North Brantford, and East Haven. Oh, I didn't realize that. Okay. Yes. So that's a lot of people. That is a lot of people. that's Seven, a big area. 72,000 people. Okay. And... Um, Brantford and East Haven have nearly the same population. I see. Um, though East Haven has problems because people live closer together. Okay. Brantford, uh, each town has its own flavor. Mm -hmm. And they're about, what, 25,000 residents each? Yeah. Okay, 20, we're about 20, 15. Yeah, maybe 27. Okay. Some, somewhere In that there. ballpark, right. Right, right. North Brantford being the wonderful town it is, has less people, but more people who live here, here but don't work here. I see. And so to communicate with them, I have to find other ways. Like to the get senior center, do you, yep. like the schools perhaps? Yep. Yep. Right. So it's hard to find right. Right, that one um, central location to right. get a lot and, of, and, get a word and out. Communication is the answer. Like, you, it, it, you have to find a way to get to people. If a, if a community like North Brantford were to have a spike in tick-borne disease, how would your district, how would you reach out to our community? Or East Haven, if they had a spike in asthma or a water issue, let's say, how would you right. reach out to them? So the first thing I would do is work with my partners. Okay. <laughs> Which would be town government? Town and government, um, clinics the pediatricians, the doctors, you know, find, who, you know, if it's a mental health problem, we're working with the counseling centers or social services, you know, there's all different ways and different partners Depending to Depending on the issue, I right, suppose. Right, right. And that's really the best way to reach all the populations is find who those people are connected to. Okay. Um, so, th so, anyway, so how many people work in the district in your office. Okay, so we have 14 people. Oh, all <laughs> for, for 72,000, yes. <laughs> that's remarkable in and of itself. And so then these 14 people have, you have like a broad reach as to what you focus on. Right. Do those other um, people, employees, serve more specific areas? Yeah. Okay, so what were, what we are those have areas? a group that's the environmental section. Now, they enforce laws. Okay. So when you go in a restaurant, that restaurant is inspected a certain many times a year. And so those environmental people, they inspect those restaurants. They also inspect beauty salons, tattoo parlors, uh, hotels, motels, daycares. To you make know. sure they're fulfilling their requirements. Right. Yeah. Make sure their requirements are fulfilled. But also to educate. And I always say this, we're all health educators. But to go in and teach the people who have opened this restaurant that even though they have a bulk bag of rice, they can't keep that on the floor. Correct, right. That has to be up on a shelf. So. And what the consequences of having it on the floor could be to the clientele. Right, right, that somebody could get sick. Mm -hmm. And when you go to the Potato and Corn Festival, all those food vendors are inspected by our department and you know we take that that role very seriously they make sure that the ovens are up to temperature that the refrigeration is down right. down in temperature yep. that people are wearing gloves uh -huh. that they're not handling money and then handling your food okay <laughs> i always tell people you know when you go into a, a fast food restaurant and you're watching them work Make sure they're wearing gloves. Make sure they're not handling the money and handling your food. You know, you have control over that, and you can say, 
you're not supposed to do that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, they also uh, inspect septic systems and work with engineers when they need to build a new septic system. So, so when a homeowner in North Brantford and you know Northford, it's a majority septic. If somebody were to have an issue, like a collapse, do they get in touch with you and you help them evaluate what the problem is and what the corrective action is? Or um, We, because this has happened, okay. and we suggest that they contact a contractor, a septic installer, and we have a list of septic installers, and we don't say, this one's better than this one. We so just, for you to call right, them. Right, we mm -hmm. give them the list, and then the septic <laughs> installer will go out and look at it and come to us and work with us based on that property's history because we keep files on the different properties and look at the history and see what can be done. Sometimes the soil needs to be tested to see how rocky it is or how absorbent it is because that's how a septic system works. Mm -hmm. um, and so they can figure out the best way and the best place to put that septic so it's not near somebody's well mm -hmm. or not near their well. You know. You, and it's not, you know, sometimes people will, like, think, oh, I could just put the swimming pool right over the septic system. Right, right. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and we, you know, guide people. Guide them people, away from that idea. Right, <laughs> people have to get a permit to get a swimming pool. Uh -huh. And one of the reasons is so that they don't put it on top of their septic system or their well. or And we try to make it, the, the rule is try to have a separate separate space on your land that if this fails, you'll be able to replace it with one over here. And plus without having to remove your swimming pool. Right. right. <laughs> while you're digging up the ground. <laughs> so that's what our environmental people do. They also um, go out on complaints. If okay. somebody's living in an apartment that doesn't have heat or hot water, mm. um, they work with the landlord to try to get this resolved. Okay. Um, we also um, test the beach waters so that okay. to make sure in the summer that it's there's not an overly amount of and bacteria. That, and, that, and that's the lakes that we have. The lakes, yep. Um, and also the sound as well. Yep. Okay. Yep. We also test the water. Uh, we also monitor the rainfall for the commercial fishermen. If we get too much rainfall, we have to close the beat the shellfish beds because, because what the happens, bacteria run off. right, all the rain will c wash down all the pollutants on the land into the water. Right. How long does that typically, it depends on the rainfall, I've always right. been curious as to how so long. So if we get over two it, inches yeah. in, a, in a set amount of time, set amount of time we close the shellfish beds. Um, they typically are closed seven to ten days. Okay. But And that's also swimming too. Well, for the swimming, we test the water. Okay. Um, we are working right now so on setting so up preemptive measurements because there are other places along the shoreline, like down in Greenwich, they have a preemptive amount of rain where they just automatically close the So beaches. like a two inch right. deal in a period right. of time, you're, we're closed no matter yep. what because we know we're right. gonna have high bacteria right. levels. Fascinating, okay. Cause we, so I'm the person who monitors rainfall. So you're the potential bad guy when you close off. Right, days. right. Okay. But I'm very aware that it's people's livelihoods. Sure, that's the most important. Right. Um, so then we have our environmental. What other? Um, we have a nursing um, program. So we have two public health nurses, um, one full-time and one part-time, and they give vaccinations. And flu shots and all that. Flu shots. Really? We do flu shots every year. We do them in the town halls. Really? In, even in North Brantford, I, we're we're I, there. I, okay. I'll send you the flyer when we set I'll get it. it up. I'll put it up <laughs> on YouTube. Absolutely. I'll share it on Facebook. Um, we we have a thing called um, there's a state program called the cocooning program where we give people the vaccination to whooping cough who have new babies. My. Okay. Because even though you got that when you were a baby you might not still be immune okay. by the time you're an adult. And, then you're and when you have a baby, the baby is not immune from their it. vaccinations till they're a year old. Okay. So Oof. to parents and grandparents who watch the kid, we, we will give vaccinate them the vaccinate them. them. Okay. And that's knew? a free program in our district. That's fantastic. We also have a travel clinic and we give vaccinations for people who are going overseas. 
and people come in and they talk to our medical advisor who is a doctor who will talk to them about where they're going and what are the health risks where they are going and they also get their vaccines okay so that's another program that they run okay so then we have environmental we have nursing and now Next. we have home visiting okay so we have a crew of four home visitors um, who work under a licensed social worker and they go out and visit new moms who have babies and anybody doesn't matter if it's your first baby or your fourth baby we don't care um, anybody who comes and says that they would like this service um, they go out and they visit them as often as they want like as often as for support for the people who resource. have the babies yeah so what do you do when the baby won't stop crying mm. how do you keep yourself from getting upset and shaking a baby how does a dad learn not to be the babysitter but to be a dad mm -hmm. to be able to comfort that baby we there's a program called dr dad where they learn to actually be able to help if the baby has a fever if the baby so it's not always the mom who mm -hmm. has to do all that stuff mm -hmm. and it's it's really a wonderful program i think like so, you know it sounds like you know that's a wonderful source of support for a lot of people you know when you don't have when you have a newborn you may not have family or friends in the area you may not be familiar with the area what a fantastic resource yeah. there is you know we're here to help you so we're not only do they meet one-on-one -on -one, but they have group a thing called group connections where they all come together and they'll have some a guest speaker or they'll have a special craft say it's like easter time and they're all make easter baskets and it's a great way for people in the right. same situation to network as well right. and everybody can use last each other year for we had our first um community baby shower wow so we brought in a lot of different agencies and did a lot of different resources and had a big open area where new moms could come in and walk around and talk to the different people and get resources and we had a raffle somebody won a car seat okay um there was a woman giving free um massages to to pregnant women it was a really wonderful wow wonderful activity. resource so um because we really think that health starts before you're born <laughs> oh, that's very true i mean right when you're pregnant that's yeah. where it all begins yeah. um next then so then these are all resources that i never knew you offered right, right. Um, what else is there and we have just started um uh, to address the opioid crisis. Okay. Um, we have um, an ad that's right in the movie theaters in Brantford right now, playing before all the movies that are PG-13 th or higher. Um, so we're, um, this is a really well-organized um, campaign. Is this, this just in our this, region or is it statewide? Well, this is statewide, okay. but yeah, we have the money for our region that we are spending to try to get the resources. We're also, on the flip side of educating the public, we're educating doctors, we're educating dentists, we're educating veterinarians, pharmacists, all these different people about what's, you know, what's out there. And the doctors, you know, the state has set up a system so they have to report back to as to how many opioids the they are prescribing for people okay right. and it's a whole new system and it's wonderful but some doctors are opting out of doing it hmm. <laughs> okay and so it's hard to keep track of how many opioids are out there and we also are trying to bring in education to give for alternatives to opioids for pain so there's a whole lot of different, I call that, that project an octopus project because it has about eight different arms. There's sure. lots it's of It's a complicated issue. Right. It's a, there's a lot of different things going on. One of the big things is reducing the stigma. Right. right? The, no longer is the addict the skinny teenager in the hoodie in the corner shooting up. It's, any, that, it's everybody. That, right. You know, right. It's anybody and everybody right. that could be a, right. a victim of People this. will tell you, you know, how many people are in your life? Well, a certain percentage of those people are hooked on opioids. Right. right. You just don't know. Just statistically speaking. Yeah. That's what it breaks down to. Yeah. Okay. 
And let's see. And then we just have our administrative people. Just, just, those are the people who answer the phone. Those are the people on the front line. And okay. I give them a lot of credit because those are the people who have to, you know, answer questions right on the spot. When somebody brings in a tick and wants it tested for Lyme disease, they're the ones who are taking it and putting it in the envelope wow. and getting it out. Is that done in-house or is that sent out to a lab? It's sent out to the... Um, Agricultural Experiment Station in New Haven. Okay. So that's a state-run um, laboratory. Okay. And they test the ticks, not only for Lyme, but all the other diseases that ticks carry. Sure, sure. Um, okay, so what projects are you working on? So, uh, amongst all these other <laughs> um, focuses. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it, it changes a lot. But over the last three years, I have been working on our accreditation. Okay. So public health accreditation is a national accreditation that started about 10 years ago. Um, I got certified and our health director got certified as site visitors for other places. So, so you then were amongst the first in the state, at least, to be certified. Yes. Okay. So we go through, when, when you're on... Um, a case and it's totally voluntary you and a couple other people from other places in the country go through the paperwork of another health department and all the in things state or, uh, out of out of they, state as well out out of state okay they try not to have you you know in your own it, backyard right right and Connecticut's such a small state sure so <laughs> you have no choice but to leave the border <laughs> right all right. right so you travel the country did then doing yes this. yeah Okay. And you go through all their paperwork, and about four months later, after you've gone through everything, you go and visit the health department, and you make sure what you're seeing on paper is what is really happening. I see. So, so this is a district. Um, in Connecticut, it's very localized, though. So yes. you have town health districts, but how many, uh, not even a, okay, so you know what I'm trying to say, so I'm saying each town has its, um, health health department uh, health department okay and the health but we're department, a health district right and we're a health department and all health departments um, are funded through the towns that they're in and from the state but they have to be operated they have to s follow the same guidelines correct or no um, for the environmental okay section there are plenty of health departments that don't have any nursing most don't have home visiting um, I would say less than a quarter have health educators. My. Yeah. How many are certified in this state? Because we have 100, how many towns do we have even? We have 100 and... Um, so how many have accreditation? Yeah. Three. Three. Right. And the state is accredited. They just got accredited last year. Okay. So the vast majority do not have accreditation. Right. There's, um, we, there's a working group of us who um, get on the phone on a webinar every month um, to work on our accreditation together and, and, you know, talk about the problems we have. And what, because in those smaller areas, the health departments, there may be areas that are lacking that they really do need the service. They have the demand for the service right. that they're not able to provide. Right. There are towns that just have a health director and a secretary. Okay. And maybe contract out a sanitarian. Now, sanitarian is the environmental specialist right. who would look at the septic and uh, inspect the restaurants, that kind of thing. Okay. So um, some towns get away with that. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel bad for the people in those towns. Well, because, because they don't have the resources. They don't have the services. Right. right. They don't have the services that. And know, then, and then when you have accreditation, it standardizes. It standardizes a lot. You follow of, the same criterion as the other two accredited districts. Right. Correct? Okay. Right. But um, it still doesn't make them all equal. Okay. I will tell that you that. That doesn't mean that they're going to offer all the same services. Exactly. Or the same services. Right. Some towns, like some towns, have a blight ordinance, right? Mm -hmm. in, the, in our district, one town has a blight ordinance, two do not. Mm -hmm. So, how do, you know, it's tricky so how you that? treat that. Is that like a it's, building department issue? It's building department, and of course, the health department always gets called. Sure. It's like, Hoarding cases, sure. same thing. When they're when they're like, concerned that a human right. may be at risk, right? If there's if we consider it a risk to someone's health, we are then there. you get involved, right? Right. Okay. So it's very tricky. 
Yeah, right. <laughs> but one of the things for accreditation is doing an assessment. So every four years we go out and ask people questions. It's about a 30 question um, survey that I put out. And out of those questions, we ask people, you know, how healthy are you? What, what diseases do you suffer from? What habits do you have? Do you drink? Do you smoke? Do you exercise? Do you eat fast food? You know, all the different things. And it changes every four years, too, because fast food isn't the same as it was four years ago. Right, right. Fast food, you can get fast food that's gourmet from the grocery store. Much healthier store, than it was right, four years ago. Versus getting McDonald's. So then that, so that, that question totally changes. has to change. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> but we find out how people are and what they're concerned about is the big thing. Because you can have all the programs in the world about what's, what is really happening, but unless people are concerned about it, nobody's going to listen. Sure. Nobody's going to show up. Okay. <laughs> so when people do have a concern, you have a website, correct? Yes. What is your website? So it's www. E S D H D for East Shore District Health Department dot org. Do you have a phone number that you know off? And hand? we do. It's 203-481-4233. Okay. And so people can call up when they have a concern about, you know, they have a tick that they found they would like analyzed, or if they have a water issue, um, or any of the other issues that yeah. you just mentioned, the brief yeah. overview. Or if they want a health educator to come out and talk to their Girl Scout troop. Do you go to the something. schools? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. But I, I'm like a vampire. I have to be invited in. Okay. <laughs> sure, of course. <laughs> of course. So um, I, I commonly go to North Brantford High School to their environmental fair okay. and bring stuff and talk to the kids. I go to the East Haven Health Occupational um, Student Association and talk about public health and what public health is because public health is population health. It's all around us and it is everything. Okay. It's water, it's food, it's air. Everything affects us. Right, right. Okay. Well, you know, we're almost out of time, you know, and um, what I would like to do hopefully is invite, you know, the people that spe specialize in the environmental side and in, in the you know, the health, the nursing side, perhaps, because that's a subject in and of itself, which is really um, expansive. Yeah, I, I, I can't do it justice. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. No, I mean, we only have a set amount of time, unfortunately, but, I, you know, I had no idea before I started looking into this that you did what you do. I'm in, impressed and thankful. Um, and I, you know, hopefully, you know, brought a lot of information to the people out there that you are a resource for a myriad of, um, different subjects and hopefully people will take advantage mm -hmm. of that and at least appreciate the fact that you're there doing what you do um, for the community and I really appreciate how passionate you are well, um, thank about you. the I, subject matter it's, too. It's, it's a really a mission for me. Yeah, I can it, tell. It's way more than a job. You know, in, in, <laughs> in, you know, your department, if I can call it a department, is something that's always there in the background, affecting everything we do every day where we live, and nobody really knows it, so it's good that you're here. Yeah, unless they have a problem. <laughs> right, unless there's a problem. And then a lot of times we're the last bastion. Right. They, they will have called all the town departments, and they get to us, okay. and they're like, oh, help me. Now what do we do? And, and our rule in our health department is never leave anybody hanging. Right, sure. Like, we, if nothing else, we'll give you a resource to go to. Okay, well, you know, I hate to cut this off, but, you know, our time is up. Um, I really appreciate your time in doing this for everybody. Well, thank you. I really appreciate being here. Um, thank you all for joining us today. Um, I would like to make this show as interactive as possible, so please email me at danarmannb at gmail.com with any suggestions or feedback. Um, please help sustain Tatucket TV and Tatucket Times in print. Thank you. Cut that out.